This building was really jumping at one time. This was it. This was the busiest train station in Detroit. It was the tallest railroad station in the world at the time it was constructed. You just can't fathom the fact that <laughs> there's nothing here now. The east was the streetcar entrance, which uh, they thought would be 75% of all the patrons would come in there. On the west, uh, as it says in the plans, it was a carriage entrance. And uh, not too far into the project, the uh, carriage portion became the cab stand. This was the, the grandest room where they overwhelmed you with their uh, the style of the architecture. The ceiling in this room is 76 feet to the highest point. The uh, stonework above is uh, an imitation marble, which, as you can see from the uh, water damage, has started to effloresce and uh, disintegrate. And be nothing in the morning to come in here as we were going to work to see 40 and 50 people sleeping on these benches waiting for the train. <laughs> oh, those were the days. The ladies' room was similar to the, the lobby of a grand hotel of, of the era. They had quarter sawn oak paneling throughout a oak parquet herringbone pattern floor. Immediately off of the uh, women's room was the, uh, the pay toilets. The barber shop, well, I'll tell you, they had three barbers there at one time. Can you imagine at a depot having three barbers and then having chairs where there'd be three people waiting for a haircut? Because you could come in here and get a haircut for 75 cents. The restaurant was really two dining areas. There was a formal dining room, which had a high, uh, series of high arched ceilings which were made out of what was known as cayenne stone. The restaurant, it wasn't elaborate, but it was clean and the food was good and the prices were reasonable. It was a nice place to get a, you know, a quick lunch. You know, I, I'm trying to think of how many times we walked this aisle to get on the train when we went home on Saturday afternoons. Uh -huh. And boy, I'm telling you, a lot of times I thought, we're not going to have room to uh, sit, we're probably going to have to be made to stand because being an employee, we'd have to give up our seat to a paying passenger. Well, that's the way it goes. You ride for nothing. Oh, well, when you ride for nothing, you got to expect to get what you can get. I got to know practically everybody in the building to over the years, you know. And the last couple of years I was here, I had a coffee concession upstairs, and I had a big year one year. I made $62. <laughs> Ed and I worked for the Auditor of Freight Accounts. We had the 10th, 11th, and 12th floors. And at that time, I would say we had roughly, oh, I would say in the vicinity of 3,000 employees in this building. It's hard to visualize people lined up to get at the train from the front door to the entrance to the station. And there's many a time that the dispatcher would tell them to hold up the train because there's still people buying tickets. Many a train left here late. During the heyday of the station, there were approximately 75 trains a day arriving and departing from the station. And then during the war, another 25 added on to that. In 
It has become more or less a white elephant in terms of its original use. It, it saddens me to see it, but I'm, I kiss the ground to realize it's still here. I was just wondering, over the 48 and a half years we were in this place, how many times we've taken this walk? Oh, I'd like to have a penny for each time. <laughs> it's almost like a bride. Yeah. Uh, what would you call that, taking the bridal walk? Yeah, it was Gee, all bride, uh, though. Yeah, I know. I wouldn't want to be married to you. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, maybe this is the last time we'll be going through these doors. Oh, no, we're going through You never know. Yeah, well, anyhow. Let's go along. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. Okay.